Today I'll be doing a high yield step one review focusing on viruses. Let's get started. So the first patient's gonna have painful vesicles around the mouth, genitals, or finger. It's gonna cause a latent recurrent infection and it's an enveloped double-stranded DNA virus. So this is HSV, the herpes virus. The next patient is gonna have a fleshy cauliflower-shaped genital lesion. So this is HPV 6 and 11 causing HPV warts. The next patient's gonna have postcoital bleeding and a friable cervical mass. So this is going to be HPV 16 and 18, causing cervical carcinoma. The next patient's going to have HIV with demyelinated plaques in the brain and memory decline. So this is JC virus causing PML. The next patient's going to get an infection with a non-enveloped single-stranded DNA virus. A newborn can have hydrops fatalis. A child can have red cheeks that look like they got slapped, or a sickle cell patient can have low hemoglobin, low hematocrit, and low reticulocyte count called aplastic crisis. So this is parvovirus B19. The next patient's gonna be young, healthy, with meningitis, and this is gonna affect the temporal lobes. So this is herpes, and look out for a picture of the brain that shows the temporal lobe affected. The next patient has a child with vesicles in different stages of healing. So this is varicella, also known as chickenpox. And it's very contagious, so they might say everyone in daycare got affected, and there's these really itchy vesicles in different stages of healing. The next patient's an elder with painful vesicles on one side of the trunk that doesn't cross the midline. So this is zoster, also known as shingles. And look out for something called post-herpetic neuralgia, where the patient's going to get really bad pain in that dermatomal region even after the vesicles go away. The next patient is going to be a teenager with sore throat and enlarged liver and spleen. We tell them to avoid sports. Um, this virus is going to infect the B cells, but we see atypical T cells on the peripheral blood smear. So this is EBV causing infective mononucleosis. The next patient has AIDS and gets esophagitis and retinitis, and we see owl's eye inclusions. So this is CMV. The next virus is associated with nasopharyngeal carcinoma and Burkitt lymphoma. This is EBV. The next patient's gonna be a baby that gets a fever first then gets a rash later. Okay, so this is HHV 6 and 7, causing roseola. Okay, and in this patient, look for a fever first. The fever is going to go away, and then they get a rash after. The next patient has AIDS and gets dark purple lesions on the body. So this is HHV8 causing Kaposi sarcoma. Okay, now we want to figure out which viruses replicate in the nucleus. So all DNA viruses except for pox virus replicate in the nucleus as well as the RNA viruses called retrovirus and influenza also replicate in the nucleus. All right, now we want to figure out which virus causes the common cold and uses the ICAM-1 receptor to infect. So this is rhinovirus. 
The next patient's gonna have a mosquito bite, a history of travel, and then they get flaccid paralysis. This is West Nile virus. The next patient comes in with cough, coryza, conjunctivitis, complex spots in the mouth, a fever, a rash, and this virus belongs to paramyxoviruses. So this is measles. Okay, look out for all the C symptoms like cough, coryza, conjunctivitis, and coplic spots. And coryza just means a runny nose. So look out for that. And we really like to compare this to the next vignette where the patient has a fever, rash, lymphadenopathy, and a baby can get a congenital condition with deafness, cataracts, and a patent ductus arteriosus, and it's going to be part of the toga viruses. So this is rubella. The next patient's going to have a fever, dry cough, shortness of breath, and very characteristically, they have a loss of taste and smell. Okay, so this is COVID-19, known as coronavirus. The next patient's going to be a child with barking seal-like cough and inspiratory strider, and we see a steeple sign on chest x-ray. So this is para-influenza virus causing croup. The next patient's going to be bit by a bat, scared to drink water, drooling, fever, and we see nigri bodies. So this is rabies, okay? And the nigri bodies are pink inclusions that we see on histology. The next patient's gonna have enlarged parotid gland and testes. It can cause infertility, and they're gonna be unvaccinated. So this is mumps. The next patient's gonna have a rash on the palms, soles, and inside the mouth. So this is Coxsackie virus, and this presentation is hand, foot, mouth disease. The next patient's gonna be a child that gets watery diarrhea. Okay, so this is rotavirus and it belongs to the Rio viruses. The next patient's gonna get a fever after Christmas shopping. This virus uses hemagglutinin for entry and neuraminidase for release. So this is influenza. The next virus causes adult T-cell leukemia lymphoma. So this is HTLV1. The next set of vignettes on this slide are all going to be due to Aedes mosquito bites. And in the first one, we see a patient that has joint pain, rash, and a fever. So this is chikungunya virus. The next patient, same mosquito bite, but this time they get a hemorrhagic fever, lots of joint and muscle pain, a rash, low neutrophil count, low platelet count, and shock. So this is dengue. The next patient, same mosquito, but now they're going to get jaundice, black vomit, and we see councilman bodies. Okay, so this is yellow fever. And the way I remember this one is it makes you yellow, right, because of the jaundice. The next one, same mosquito bite, but this time travel to the tropics, and the baby is going to have enlarged ventricles and calcifications in the brain. So this is Zika virus. The next patient's going to have an acute self-limiting infection and a history of eating raw shellfish. So this is hepatitis A, which is an RNA picornavirus. The next patient's going to get a chronic infection, either due to blood contact, sexual contact, or through birth. This is going to be Hep B. It's a DNA virus, part of the Hepadna viruses. The next infections are also going to be chronic, 
with IV drug use. So this is hepatitis C, an RNA virus, part of the Flavi viruses. The next one requires hep B to infect. And this is hepatitis D. It's an RNA virus, part of the Delta viruses. The next one causes high mortality in pregnant patients. This is hepatitis E, another RNA virus, part of the hepi viruses. The next one is associated with mixed cryoglobulinemia, where you get palpable purpura and joint pain, and also por porphyria cutanea tarda, where you get blisters on the back of the hands. So this is hepatitis C. The next one's associated with membranous glomerulonephritis, which causes a nephrotic presentation, and also polyarteritis nodosa, where you get abdominal pain and microaneurysms in the kidneys. So this is hepatitis B. The next patient's going to come in with a labs showing antibodies against HBS and antibodies against HBE. So this is a hepatitis B recovery. So it means that the patient had hepatitis B and they successfully recovered. Compare this to the next patient who has antibodies against HBS positive only. So this means the patient had a hepatitis B vaccination. The next patient's gonna have scrapable white plaques in the mouth and now they get a fever, headache, stiff neck, and it shows a pathogen that stains with India ink. Okay, so this is an HIV infection, and this one's a bit tricky, but remember, HIV patients tend to get candida infections with the oral thrush, which is demonstrated by the scrapable white plaques, and then the meningitis-like symptoms with cryptococcus neoformans, hence the India ink staining pathogen. Okay, so an underlying HIV infection here. The next virus uses GP120 for attachment and GP41 for fusion, and it binds to CCR5 on macrophages and CXCR4 on CD4 T cells. This is also HIV. The next one is going to affect AIDS in transplant patients, and we're going to see linear ulcers in the esophagus, cotton wool spots on fundoscopy, and owl eye inclusions. So this is going to be CMV. This really likes to affect patients that are immunocompromised. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out, and I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you everyone, good luck studying.